Welcome back to another episode on All Things China. This week, I will continue to use text to speech to save some time on recording the video as I am on the road for Chinese New Year. This time, instead of translating the news, I will share my commentary instead as I am guessing that's what you want to hear. About two weeks ago, I was discussing about the PBOC injecting 350 billion in PSLs, and the latest follow up is here. Guangzhou was granted 142.6 billion Chinese yuan, 20.1 billion US dollars, by China Development Bank and Agricultural Development Bank of China for the overhaul of 14 urban villages and issued the first 1.5 billion Chinese yuan. 208.9 million US dollars, loan to acquire old houses, compensate residents for relocation, and build new homes. The other cities to have made their first such loans are Nanjing, Suzhou, Ningbo, Hefei, Qingdu, Shijiazhuang, Shenyang, Giang, and Jinan. So about 40% of the funds will go to Guangzhou. We'll dig around to see where these unbuilt homes are located. But based on my experience in the top cities they tend to be in the outskirts and housing prices would be the most in Guangzhou relative to the other cities so it makes sense that it is using more of the budget. The original top tier cities are Beishang, Guang, Shen, or Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen. While Nanjing, and Suzhou, etc. are traditionally second tier cities. My guess is that Nanjing, Suzhou, and perhaps Qingdu will likely get the higher proportions, given the housing prices. Remember the purpose of urban revitalization is to take over old homes and convert the land into other usages that can be sold to developers or used for other economic purposes. And when the government takes over, people will generally buy another home and will spend money to move and buy new furnishings all of which will aid in domestic consumption as well as reduce housing inventory. Shanghai has further loosening restrictions to allow people that have paid five years in social insurance to purchase a home in the outskirts. Prior to this, you had to be married and paid five years into the insurance program. So it looks like the government is hastily removing restrictions to clear inventory. Suzhou to the west of Shanghai, also a part of the group that request funds, has lifted all restrictions to allow people to buy as many properties as they choose to. I am optimistic that government engineering will result in a hastened reduction of inventory and put confidence back in the economy faster. Which bring us to examine the attitude of Chinese netizen with regards to the current economic climate. On February 2nd, the Shanghai index dropped below 2,700 before bouncing back and many were joking. For example, one said that the people at the stock market is forbidding delivery of food as they are scared of being poisoned. Or asking the best use of money, given that it is worth less and less. Someone suggest donating to the government which was followed up jokingly saying that the government organ to do so is the Shanghai Stock Exchange, Shangjia Shou, which sounds like giving money department. There is also this picture that says that I take part to protect the market from dropping, and it says I took part in protecting against 3,000, 2,900, etc. But it just kept going lower. The attitudes are pessimistic and wondering what happened to the so-called government intervention to prop up the market. As a contrarian myself, the more pessimistic the public are it usually signals a good time to buy, as many in the markets are gamblers and are really there to provide liquidity, another joke as a regulator once said that is the purpose of small investors. And when you start hearing people giving you stock tips, it is a sign to start selling which is why I think it is important to be a value investor. Understanding and assigning a value to a company allow us to be rational and remove ourselves from the emotional surrounding. And from a lot of indicators, the value in China is greater than it is in the States and the discount has only become larger. And lastly, this morning, I was tipped off about a restructuring at Meituan 
where it will integrate the delivery and in-store business to better combat ByteDance, and later saw news in this regards. This will be under Wang Pu Zhong, the current ST member and head of the delivery business where he has been pushing for a 30-minute delivery of any retail items. The current head of the in-store business Zhang Chuan will move to head up the Damping app, SaaS business, rideshare, and portable power bank business. Moreover, Wang Xing, the CEO, will take control of autonomous delivery, overseas markets. A ByteDance insider was surprised and saw it as an increasing challenge to take market share as the delivery business is the powerhouse of Meituan and using its ace to combat against lifestyle challenges especially in the food category will make it tougher to secure lower prices. Previously, Zhang Chuan in a note to staff, mentioned that this is a long-term war, and that they need to focus on getting more SKUs at everyday low prices, and need to use its strength to push ByteDance to unprofitability in the segment as to withdraw from the competition. Hence, profitability will give way to market share, unless this latest reorg change the direction. Moreover, the two most important segment is under the CEO, whether it is growth from new markets or significant cost savings from autonomous delivery, both of which will help the stock price. It also makes me ponder successions, and this looks like Wan Pu Zhong is the next successor, with Zhang Chuan as the plan B. With other S-team members further down the line. It will be an interesting to see directions and news from ByteDance and Meituan in the coming weeks. ByteDance will supposedly have a reorg in March. That's it for this week. Take care and stay safe.